While watching the online lectures, be sure to use the attached packet to take notes on. You'll find the link for the packet here at the title page for each chapter. Click on it, then print out the packet. These gray boxes in the online lectures refer to the slides and pages in the packet. In order to understand bonding, we have to understand something called the octet rule. So for instance, consider Neon right here. If we wanted to know his electronic configuration, we would determine it to be simply 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. And remember, what does that mean? In his first shell, he has two electrons right here. And in his second shell, he would have a total of eight electrons. The 2 and the 2s and the 6 and the 2p together make eight electrons. When the second shell has eight electrons, it means that that shell is full. And having this full shell is very stabilizing. For reasons that are beyond this course, it has to do with quantum mechanics. We just need to accept this. So what does that mean? Anytime we see an electronic configuration that ends with 2s2 and 2p6, we understand that that atom has a full second shell and that this is stabilizing. However, this is only applied to certain elements on the periodic table. The only elements that have to follow the octet rule are carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, sodium, and magnesium. Notice I put them in this arrangement because that's where they match up on the periodic table of elements so that you can easily remember these. These elements like to have eight electrons in their outermost shell. So let's look at the consequence of this. Let's look at sodium right here. If you were to determine his electronic configuration, you would get this right here. Which means, remember, in his first shell he has two electrons. In his second shell he would have the eight electrons, two here and the rest here. And notice he has a 3s1, which means he has a third shell with one electron in it. Now notice he does have in his second shell the eight electrons, but it's that last electron in the three shell that's making him not very stable. So what happens is there's an incentive for sodium to simply have an electron loss or lose that electron to become this right here. Notice if this happens, he gets the eight electrons in his outermost shell and therefore attains the electronic configuration of neon, the 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, which means he gains stability by doing this. So what does this mean then? It means that sodium has an incentive to turn into simply Na plus and lose an electron. So it's this electronic configuration that's explaining why sodium likes to be plus one. Let's do the same type of analysis, but for fluorine. His electronic configuration is this right here, which means again, in his 1s orbital, he has two electrons. He has in his two shell right here, seven electrons. Those would simply be the two and the 2s plus the five electrons in the 2p. So notice he almost has an octet. He's just simply missing one electron here. So there's an incentive for fluorine to simply gain an electron. And if he does, he'll become this and he'll attain his octet. So that means there's an incentive for fluorine to accept an electron. That's why typically fluorine behaves this way. He likes to accept electron and then simply become F minus.